Welcome. So our, uh, our respected today's chief guest, uh, Dr. P. T. Moshinkar, uh, who is going to handle the lecture for you. It is going to be highly useful. Then our uh, respected you know, former dean, Dr. Masilamani, who has come here all, all, all along from Sri for this particular purpose. And uh, Professor and the head of the Department of uh, Soil and Water Conservation Engineering, mm -hmm. Professor uh, Dr. Arun Dalita, Assistant Professor uh, Dr. Mani, uh, Dr. Nagaraj, and Dr. Saul others, and also our uh, most respected uh, uh, Dean PG Studies and our most respected Honorable Vice Chancellor Madam for giving this particular opportunity and all dear students. I welcome you all for this endowment lecture. This is uh, one of the important things because this is the first one, you can say last one year, this is the first time we are offering this particular actually training program uh, to you all. Okay. So this My is actually the endowment lecture. Okay. Is it audible? My skate language. So I need to start again. Okay. So, our most respected and honorable Vice Chancellor, Madam, then our respected Dean SPGS, and the today's chief guest, uh, Dr. P. Uma Shankar, then our uh, uh, beloved, our uh, former Dean, Dr. Maslamani sir, then, uh, our person, the head, Department of Soil and Water Conservation Engineering, our uh, professor, Dr. Arun, uh, Lalita, then Dr. Mani, uh, of course, uh, Dr. Nagaraj, and uh, all uh, those who are in online and dear students. Again, good afternoon. Indeed, yeah, indeed, it's a great opportunity to introduce our uh, chief guest uh, for this actually, for this uh, particular actually endowment lecture. Uh, Dr. P. T. Uma Shankar is our agriculture graduate. Okay who studied or completed during the year 1989, okay. then studied PG in 1992, then PhD in 2002, that is from online university. Then now, of course, uh, he is serving vast experience. Uh, right now, Sar is working in WES, Kings International Cambridge, it is the UK, and also, of course, uh, already in India, then Center for Ecology and Economics at uh, Chennai, where uh, he is actually uh, doing the assignment in going to business development, technical consulting, and report writing. Okay? So it's important activity. Sir has undergone to many trainings actually, agri clinics and agri business center. Uh, in that actually, then advanced training in urban greenery and ecology, the remote sensing technology and its application application of statistical techniques in hydrology, water management, marketing management, of course, yes, at the topper in ICR junior fellowship, then we got in, of course, the setup and membership in important societies, Indian Society of Articles Economics, then of course, history, society, and of course, uh, from, uh, yes, published a lot many journals at international, national, the levels are, and also participated and of course you know he has a lot of uh, things uh, to his uh, credentials actually and particularly SAR is working so SAR has got a lot of you know vast experience okay on behalf of all I like to welcome our to today's chief guest Dr. P. T. Uma Shankar on behalf of all to okay. give such a wonderful lecture to you all I welcome you sir this. And also, I'd like to welcome all, of course, all the dignitaries. I already told our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Madam, and Dean SPGS. Now, I'd like to welcome our former Dean, Dr. Masilamani, who is the one who made all the arrangement to bring him here, actually. I welcome you, sir, for this. <laughs> then, I'd like to welcome our professor and head, Soil and Water Conservation Engineering. Who is the person, of course, uh, for uh, making all the logistics and all the arrangements for the benefit of the students? Because uh, landscape is more with the uh, silent water conservation engineering. So I welcome 
of the frozen head soil and water conservation engineering on behalf of you all. Okay. Next, I welcome our, uh, our staff advisor, Dr. Lalita Madam, then all the staff, Dr. Mani, Dr. Nagaraj. Then also, I like to welcome especially the professor and head the Department of Farm Machinery and Soil and uh, Farm Machinery and Power Engineering on this occasion to give you know such a wonderful this is a great opportunity. And then I like to welcome all the students for this particular occasion. Also welcome those who are in online for this endowment lecture because this particular aspect, you know, endowment lecture which has been going on at the university level where Dean School of Postgraduate Studies that continuously organizing this for the benefit of the student. Okay. This particular thing is happening in our college because of uh, the standards effort uh, taken by uh, Dr. Masulamani, which is followed by the department people in uh, soil and water conservation engineering, starting from the professor and head to all the faculty members who made all the logistics. Okay? So, this has got a lot of importance because you know, he has such a wonderful experience. Uh, even yesterday night also, Sarah was telling that in the case of you know, so many, you know, huge amount which is coming for landscape and irrigation, where the agriculture engineers role at national level, you know, which is not that much prominent. Okay, so because you know, he is telling that they are dealing around 1,500 crores, 500 crores, you know, it has been used for the irrigation purpose, where the role of agriculture engineers at national level, you know, that is uh, really missing. So this gives, you know, it opens up the opportunity which are all available to you. Please use this opportunity because if you just imagine 1,500 crores in irrigation line where the landscape is also included, he is going to share such a wonderful experience and definitely the students, you are all at the right stage, you can think and use this opportunity. So on behalf of all, indeed it is a great uh, thanking occasion for giving me this opportunity. Welcome each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Have you everybody? A very good afternoon to one and all. Uh, so basically, I request everybody who is having a mobile phone to put it on a silent mode. And all those online participants to mute. Okay, sorry that I had to face the screen. You may watch me the screen. Better. Let me face the screen till the presentation is on. The presentation is on, let me turn it towards you. And all the online participants, kindly mute yourself and you may raise your hand uh, uh, at the end of the session to uh, answer any of the queries. So, without wasting much of your time, uh, let me uh, jump into the topic. The today's topic is on uh, advances in. Uh, so, you are all agriculture engineers uh, uh, in the third year? Yeah. Okay. In another one, one and a half years, you will be in the field. For all those who are not going to pursue your higher studies, you should be facing the world with your business opportunities, either in the government or the private sector. So, it is important that you keep abreast with the knowledge that is happening, not only in the curricular side, but also what is happening around uh, in the world. So, we are just touching upon the uh, recent trends in landscape irrigation. So, landscape irrigation itself, in itself, is a very specialized branch. But this is something like a golden age. So, like if you can nurture it uh, with little efforts, you can put on, uh, or you can uh, see that uh, your inputs will provide you with more than commensurate output. So, that is why I wanted to touch on this uh, landscape irrigation. And uh, till date, it is very hard to find landscape irrigation, landscape designers for irrigation, even in Tamil Nadu, so leave the rest of the countries. And uh, there is a huge scope for these uh, irrigation engineers globally. And uh, I find that many of our, uh, the, the good students who can perform well, I mean, uh, getting grades in college is one part of it. And applying what you have learnt in field is what is more important. So, if you see that uh, what is happening around in the world, those successful persons are making huge uh, margins and profits, which are much more than what you can think of earning in India. Okay. So, I, I am uh, associated with the Asian Development Bank right now, and we are providing a support for irrigation management plan. This is in the phase two. 
for the government of India and we have around 57 projects which are in the pipeline and for each and every project we will be evaluating them and providing them with the capital assistance based on which projects will follow on. Next please. Okay, let me start with an irritating question. What is irrigation? The same thing like what we learnt and you are learning, it's all the same, okay. But why I am telling you this is, in any any aspect of life, pose these questions towards you. What? Then you can see side by side. Okay, the point I was trying to make is to use the question words. What are all the question words you have heard about? What, how, why, when, where, what else? So these are the questions. When you try to ask these questions for everything, you will try to get the solutions. So we will start off with that. So you need to understand with every advancement in technology, there will be problems including the presentation side, yeah? So for every innovation there is a problem and you have to go to the basics. So you all know this answer, anyway I kept it short. Next please. So explanatory, why should we irrigate? Because we are not irrigating uh, once the crop cultivation started, we are not irrigating. But why we irrigate, you all know the answer, I don't want to go into that basics. Next please. When do you irrigate? This also you know. So below credibility, see what happens? The plant dies. And above field capacity also, there will be yield reduction and there will be waste of nutrients and waste of everything. So you know when. Next please. Who will take care of it or whose responsibility it is? Basically the user. If it is landscape, it is not farmer. If it is a farm, it is a farmer. And if it is a large farm managed by an irrigation engineer, then it is the irrigation engineer. So it depends on who the user is. Next please. This is where we need to know. Where? Where to irrigate? Which are the plants or which are the components that needs to be irrigated and how it is to be done. So this is what is what we will see in terms of what it is to be done in landscapes and what are the advances that has taken place till now. Next please. Now irrigation we know is not new. How old is old? We know that uh, man started irrigating. If people were hunter gatherers, they were not cultivating anything, they were only gathering food from what it was there. Civilization is a good answer. So we are we now too civilized? So we should be irrigating. Okay. So when people became nomads and when they started to settle down in a place and start cultivating, then itself irrigation started. Now where did they cultivate plants? They were looking at places where water was available. So people settled by the sides of river banks or where the abundant water supply was available. So we know that man was always in the thirst of water and water was the basis for life. So even the crop cultivation, the man chose a place where water was available, but initially it was on the flood lines of the rivers. See on either side of the river where seasonal inundation would be there, where the permanent flooding is not there, where the soil can be saturated. So people started using the flood lines. And uh, that is when the, I mean, we have these historical evidences in the pre Sangam era, in the Harappa, Mohanjadaro, elsewhere in Nile civilization and in Incas, in South America, everywhere across the globe, this was the same trend. Now, what, what was our hydrological knowledge then? Now we are talking about uh, LP round, water cycle. Uh, water evaporates and the same water we get. So we understand the water cycle, we understand the air is round and so on and so forth by reading. But were the, our phone fathers aware of this? Definitely yes. So we are now planning for water harvesting systems. But there are literature which suggests 
the users were also planning for rain harvesting. So we are harvesting rain water and rain harvesting. These are two totally different concepts. You make the rain come. So that is a different concept. We will not touch into that as of now. Let's go into the how the irrigation started. So everything started with basically raising a water. If it is a flow irrigation, you divert the flow. So when there is a river flow, you will divert it upstream. How do you divert? You either take a trench and take the water along the gravity where the uh, nature and scope is available or you head up the water. How do you head up the water? By abstracting the flow. So once you abstract, this is the first thing we would like to start with. Because I, I got, I took these examples because we are all from Pritchard and we thought that we could get the same examples from here. Yeah. So you, you all know about Kalanai. So this is the one of the living artifacts of hydrological history globally. I'm not talking about India, it's globally. And how did this idea of constructing of a flood barrier or a diversion structure came in? It's all people should think. So when people were thinking, when the person who decided to construct this was standing on the shore, seashore, you all like to stand on the seashore and let the wave pass through you. So once the receiving wave goes out, there is a lot of sand particles which is removed back to the sea. Are we still standing or are we falling? Standing. Why are we standing? It is because of our weight. So our support is able, our weight is able to support the small amount of accretion of sand which is happening beneath our foot. So this is the same concept that was put to use for the construction of this dam. Next please. You will find that this dam is about 329 meters long and look at the width, it is almost 20 meters. So they laid a series of rocks on the bed. The difference between the other developments across the globe and the developments that happened at that time in India or in Trichy for instance is, we already started to use clay as a binding material between these two rocks. Okay, you have two pieces of rocks. We use now cement. Earlier people were using limestones. Before that what? Now people were using dry beds, dry rocks were aggregated to form as a, a barrier. Now like we started using clay. But what happens is clay, it won't withstand for long piece. Then it goes off. Hey. May I, may I request the participants to kindly mute yourself? Yeah, but for the organizers, yeah, kindly mute yourself. Thank you. So this is how the construction technique started. And uh, this was uh, discovered, rediscovered in 1800s when Sir Arthur Cotton was commissioned to repair this anikat. So like he happened to see this and he saw that there was a marble behind it. So this gave him the idea that we could do something similar elsewhere. So if you go to Godavari, a similar structure is also existing. The idea came from Kalanai. So from the second century, the one which is still serving the purpose is Kalanai. And you know this is the technology that they were using to split the rocks. Very simple tool, just put on a chisel some portion of the rock, pour water and hammer it with a wooden anvil. Fix. Let add more water and let the wood expand and do the cracking part. So this was how the large boulders were made into sectioned stones used for construction. Next please. So this was like uh, when I was traveling yesterday, I was able to capture this. It's the same grand anecdote which is still there. Take a note of home, sir. Yeah. Now the next thing is, yeah. The next thing is like, one was to obstruct the flow of the river. 
Now river is a channelized portion where water is being conveyed, open channels. But we receive rainfall in abundance. You know Tamil Nadu is something like uh, where you have 900 plus mm of rainfall, which is uh, not too bad. And in some places like you go to the western Ghats, it is 3000 plus, go to the southern portion, so Kanyan Mari is again 3000 plus, go to Chennai it is 1300 plus. So we are having abundant rainfall, but when do you get the rainfall? Monsoon. So what is the monsoon for the, this part of the region, Tamil Nadu? North East. For the rest of the country? So we have some significant difference between the monsoon which is happening in the rest of the country and the monsoon which is happening in the uh, in our past, in our uh, other area. Now how many rainy days do we have? Less than 52 or maybe once a week if it is evenly distributed which is not so. so. And the, the distribution happens between within a span of 60 days. In 60 days, we get about 50, 52 days of uh, um, amount of rainfall, which is constituting about 70 to 80 percent of the average annual rainfall. So, how do you use, make use of this rainfall? First of all, you need to have a source to harvest this rainfall, then put to use for irrigation. So, irrigation comes next once the augmentation of source is done. So, that also we had some good experiences. Let me again go back to the AD system. You can see this is along the Bay of Bengal, somewhere near the, from Shivaganga to Ramnad or the SOL Ramnad which had the three districts put together. Now it, is, it was called as a tank district. Similarly, Changalpet was also called as a tank district. Can you see the water bodies? Next please. You can see it better now. Can you see the darker portions? Next please. Can you see the more expanded way? Next please. Now this is one tank. Now in a very flat rolling topography, I mean constructing a tank along the valley or a gorge or something like that, we know that that is the smallest amount of uh, space where if you can construct a barrier, you will be able to impound water. But this is a case where if the uh, slope is very gentle and if you go to Ramnad and if you stand on a tank bed, you will not, in a dry period, you will not be able to say which is the command and which is the water spread area. So that is the way the slope is. Now the ingenuity of having um, identified the locations, excavating the soil, form a bund, construct a sluice, construct a drain channel, construct a irrigation channel, construct a surplus course is very, very ingenious. Now that we should be happy that we had about 39,000 plus tanks. Maybe now the thanks to the new bus standards and, and the other developments, we have lost many. So these were the ingenuity that we had. So we don't say that the ancient people did not have any advancements. They did have advancements, but it was for their age. In our age, they have now become redundant. Now, what is the percentage of tank irrigated area to the net cultivated area? It is much less than the groundwater irrigated area. So we find that from surface to groundwater, we are shifting our focus on the source, which is having very deleterious consequences for the future also. I can go back to the home side. Okay, oh, let it be. You can also see like we were talking about the surface water. One was on the major river, the other one was on the rainbow, rainwater harvesting. And now you see that people were also conversant in using the groundwater. So these are the, uh, the, we had some seven excavations happening in about five districts and this was some of the findings which came out recently. So we were able to see that we had dug wells. Of course these dug wells, we are not sure whether it was used to irrigate, but definitely the half to harness groundwater 2000, 2500 years back is definitely a big science which they have uh, mastered and they have used the then available plastic which is clay. So clay is, you, we all know is elastic but once you bake it, it becomes plastic. So that is the first plastic and now we are facing a different plastic which is having a different problem. But they both are not very different. Again this is plastic, the other one is also plastic, we need to find a balance between these two. Next please. 
again we have something else in kodumalam area where it was an industrial area where they were cleaning their industrial produce for exports so you won't find that something happening in uh, area near giro where people were uh, preparing products to be washed in a well and to be exported to different countries across the globe so we our ancient technology was uh, no second to what we are trying to develop now but with that background we need to see like where we take the present technology to the future next form uh, sir so this is about the past so let us uh, stop with the past We're too much of uh, uh, pondering and uh, talking about the past so let us come to the present okay and you know like which is the most irrigated country in the world have you had your lunch this afternoon <laughs> yeah you should be happy you can be proudly telling it is india definitely india is uh, the most irrigated country don't be very happy about it you know irrigation is a necessary evil it is the most irrigated i mean china by geography is having the largest area but in many parts of china you cannot irrigate when there is no bound areas you cannot irrigate so like india is topping the list now and if you take these two countries they are the most irrigated countries in the world next please okay let us stop irrigation for a moment in general and go into the landscape irrigation so what is landscape irrigation you find both these in your campus you have irrigation for your field crops and you also have irrigation for your landscape for your ornamental crops or your aesthetic crops or so on and so forth okay so like how did the concept of landscape come in gardens were not new we have uh, epics like in ramayana mahabharata we talk about nandavan and so many other things these are all gardens you know about mogal gardens you know about the bangu babylonia and mesopotamia where they had this hanging gardens so garden concept is as old as your uh, field irrigation or irrigating for the crops which gives us food fiber and fodder so this is how the concept of garden came in but that time how were they irrigating did they have all these sophisticated tools no they were mostly stream diversions you can see in many places of france they had huge fountains in the parks now how can they feed a fountain they didn't have any pumps they did not have huge pipelines <coughs> how were they able to maintain a fountain in the middle of a park again the basic science you know gravity you draw water from a area which is much above your the contour then have your canals constructed and have an outfall here and uh, with the pressure water goes up this was the first birthplace of a fountain where you use the gravity now that we have so many tools we can always design it in such a way so this is how the concept of landscape garden and irrigating the garden came in otherwise like our earlier gardens were only planted with uh, trees that can withstand the droughts as the rainfall so this mix of rainfall and uh, seasonal droughts were the part of the earlier landscape so we were again you should be very happy that we were the first people to have the landscape classified into five land use classes you know about that mullai marudam neeral so this is again the land use landscape classification which was done earlier so people even at that time they understood what land use was and what type of landscape was and what are the animals associated with the landscape what are the plants associated with that landscape so people were associating themselves with the ecology within which they made a life out of it okay um in field in uh, field irrigation you will still find a predominant way of irrigating would be through flooding am i right 
the most common see whenever you get water whether it is from a pump site or whether it is from a canal outlet whatever it is you try to inundate your field for some time and once you feel that the field is saturated or it is stagnant for about uh, uh, 5 mm or 6 mm depending upon your soil type etc and the availability of the next uh, turn of your irrigation you decide and you stop that's that is a normal mode of irrigation then you have all the other improved parts of it then what happened was like we did not have enough water to irrigate the area that we already are cultivating so we need to save this water from flooding and use it for the other areas where rainfall farming could be converted to irrigated farming so what happens is that we there is a need for efficient irrigation we should not be irrigating more we should use this judiciously and make it available for the other area or expand the area that you have rainfall and uh, irrigated mix you wanted to make more of irrigated less of rainfall so that you are more assured of your crops so that is when you started to look into the concept of micro irrigation so micro irrigation what are the types of micro irrigation you are aware of okay if you go to the next slide i think that is going to say so we will be concentrating on the mode of delivery we will not be looking into the source of course we will take the irrigation source is important conveyance is important irrigation or the conveyance mechanism is important and the delivery mechanism is important so let us focus on the end where the farmer will have or the user will have a direct interface so drip or trickle irrigation one second sprinkler sprinkler next please so it simply mimics rainfall third one misting and fogging have you seen that poly hose so you know that in poly hose you need to irrigate even more judiciously because the top also is covered so your evaporation rates and temperature needs to be controlled so you can go to fogging okay then the hydroponics is slightly different because in other areas you will be using soil as a medium in hydroponics water itself becomes the medium for plant growth so these are the major things can you think of anything else to irrigate air is hydroponics anything else you can't think of as of now because our mind is only bounded by these ideas maybe someone will come up with something ingenious when we will start to realize okay this is a discovery we should have thought about it so that also could be happening in future but until now these are the methods by which we are irrigating now the same thing will apply to landscape irrigation also in a landscape we know that you will be focusing on a garden or an urban area or uh, other than agriculture areas you can consider them as your landscape areas and we know that in a landscape area water is has to be more judiciously utilized rather than agriculture because in urban areas the value of water is much more than the value of water in the rural areas and the you know that how most cities are starving for water we already are due for our share of water in taveri which is supposed to be released on june 6 or 10 we are yet to get it full full June 12, stand corrected. So I'm sure that people are not sleeping, right? So June 12, we are supposed to get. We are already in July 7. We are not getting it. You do not know when you will get it. How will you manage the water availability during that? Drinking, you can do something. Yeah, people have experience. We have brought water from here out to Chennai by trains. We have empty number of ways by which. we have done some cloud seeding so many things we have done to see that water is conveyed to the point of uh, use so in an urban area when drinking water is so scarce when you want to use the same water for irrigation will your conscious or the societal conscious permit it definitely no so that is where you are focusing more on the micro irrigation part and when you are considering irrigation you should be more and more judicious okay when you see a garden or a landscape what are the parts of a garden you when you when you enter a garden you see so many things right 
So there are some inanimate things like your walkway or the path by which you enter in and exit out of the park. That will not be irrigated, right? Maybe occasional washes will be there. That will not be irrigated. You need a place to sit or to protect yourself from the rain or sun, a shelter and seating arrangements. Then you also have some other structures. You wanted to have a sculpture or a, a stone item or a, a mechanical model or a sculpture of a leader, etc., etc. So many things. Now comes plants. So these are the essential things. Next please. So what are the types of plants? you can find in a garden and how it is different from the plants that you find in a field crop. Now in a field crop you normally grow one, two or few crops. You go to a garden, you have a mix. Now you have a tree crop, you have a shrub or a herb, they are both different in shape, size, form, water requirement. Irrigation requirement, their frequency by which the irrigation requirements are there, one could be a xerophyte, one could be a halophyte, one could be a hydrophyte. So they all have different types of water requirement. So you have lawns and grasses. That's again a major component in many gardens. That is where you find large green patches of turf. Other than what you find in the golf courses and in the cricket stadiums, you will find a large pieces of lawn only in the gardens. Because not many people can afford it for their homes and we need to have it in a public place where we can put to use. Now what is the water requirement for a lawn and a tree? Is it the same? A tree can be irrigated once a week or once in a month also. Can we do the same thing for a lawn? So that is where the role of irrigation engineer starts. So this is with regard to irrigating the plants. Apart from irrigation, you deal with water basically. So you should do some more things other than irrigating. So what are the options that you have in a park? You have water features. So when I, when I say irrigation, you also look into the lighting portion of it. If the premises has to be used for a, a night use or the evening use or a dusk and dawn use, you would require lighting. And uh, the lighting also can be combined with the irrigation works. Similarly, you look at the water features in terms of uh, you have like I told you about the fountains, definitely you have fountains. Basically fountains are, uh, we call them as active humidifiers because in places like Trichy where the humidity levels are low, definitely you need to have high humidity in a public place. Therefore, we, instead of calling them fountain and aesthetic means we call them technically as an active humidifier which can improve the humidity of the local environment. Similarly, you have cascades. You have slow moving water from one level to the other. We had cascade of tanks also, irrigation tanks also were aligned in cascades earlier. And we also have ponds. Ponds, you know, it can range from a farm pond to your integrated farming system to larger ponds and things like that. So these are passive humidifiers. So active humidifiers and passive humidifiers. They are fit for a purpose. Now let us go in details one by one. So, if you complete your course and go to a field and you are given a task to design for an area, design irrigation for a garden. Now, how do you start with? You know about the basics. You have learnt about uh, what irrigation is, uh, what are the types of uh, irrigation, what are the types of pumps, what are the types of pipelines and uh, conduits that we have, what are the types of emitters and uh, fountains that we can use. But how will you go to a location and think of like, okay, I have these things in my stuff. Let me use all these things and do an avial. Can we do that? <coughs> so you have to have something on a structured manner by which you get prepared to identify a good irrigation design. So once you design, then you try to get the various items for your design, then you pull up everything and start preparing a budget, negotiate with the client and once the client is happy with your design and budget, then you may get a work to do. The same as with the government as well as the private sector also. In a government park also, if an irrigation design has to be given, 
then they will be giving you a piece of land and some information from the architect with which you all have to prepare an irrigation design and prepare an estimate and provide. Only based on that acceptance you can proceed for that. So, we all know like how we start writing a paper whenever an assignment is given. Okay, they want to put a margin but before that you need something, a content, right, to write. <laughs> she has gone to the paper. First of all, something has to be in your mind. So, for content, what you normally do? Open up your laptop or your phone, open up Google, then type the keywords. Now, you have the chat GPT also. Yeah, how many are using chat GPT for your project? So, grey matter will do better. If you start using chat GPT, then you will forget what your name is. So, start using what you have. Once you have exhausted, start using the others. So, that is not the way by which we proceed, but definitely we need to do some desk work. This desk work is based on what you have learned in this three years or one more year that you will be learning in the college on the basics of design. You by this time should have seen that which are the places where we have drippers, which are the places where we have fountains and what is the size of uh, the sprinklers that they are using in A location or B location. So, these are the things in which you will be observing it on a daily basis, not that you are taking up the subject. You should have the common sense of looking at what is happening around you and try to get that knowledge. That is the best knowledge which will be useful to you because the subject knowledge is only limited to that subject. To apply that subject to the general situation, you need the overall common sense. So, you keep your senses open. What are the five senses that you have? So, vision, so see this now as a vision of an irrigation engineer, you should be looking at if anything is happening in terms of water, your sight must first focus on that. Your perspective of that should be different than the others. Similarly, whenever you hear something about that, talk, when somebody is talking about an irrigation design, just let your ears to listen that. It may be or may not be useful, but at least it will uh, show some, throw, throw some light which can make you clear of your doubts or which can even confuse you, but that's not the matter. Try to get the information of what's floating around, right? So, this is how you try to get the desk information and start. What do you do? You need to know what is your point of connection, where you will be getting the water from. Some person say that I, I wanted to have a garden in my house. Now, the first thing is where will you get water? From a overhead tank or from a sump or directly from a borewell. So, that is your point of connection. So, you need to look at your POC and then you have to decide like what could be the static pressure, what could be the dynamic pressure. What are the pipelines available in that location? And what is the area that is to be irrigated? What are the crops that will be grown there? What will be the crop water requirement for that? And back working, go to the irrigation requirement, work out all the losses, then go to the source. Can you match it? So, this is something, it's a desk work calculation that you do it in mind. You don't need to really take pen, paper, things like that to work out. So, these are some of the basic things you start with. You do the test work. Now, I have added something like filtration, timing of availability. So, these things, I think this lecture also will be available with you. You can look at them at a later point. List and assess the plan it is. Now, do you have the evaporation, evapotranspiration rates for all? Because for only for crops which are used in abundance, there will be documentations. Now, that is why landscape irrigation is important. You will get information for coconut. You may get it for alkanet. Can you get for the royal palm or the foxtail palm or the fishtail palm? Who won't get it? Yeah. They are, I mean, they all belong to the same family, but one can go up to 30 meters, one can go up to 15 meters, one can go up to 5 meters. And at every stage, their water requirements will also be growth pattern. So, this is where is the complex situation of how you plan. When you don't get it, take a reference. Okay, when you don't have a fish tail or fox tail, there is a common name palm behind it. Go for the palm that you know, coconut palm. Use that. Nothing wrong. 
if you find the trees or the crops similar use what is available to you that is how you can proceed further until an analysis research starts to trickle in with providing more information yeah then you need to assess the irrigation needs now like uh, do i need to frequently irrigate my crop between october and november in this portion oh, precipitation is already there good so what are all the weather parameters that you need to know what are all the weather parameters that you get from your meteorological observatory here can you be louder somebody said sunshine good sunshine is more useful for people who are designing the landscape okay then okay you have the anemometers where you know the wind speed and the wind vane for your wind direction wind direction is it static again that also is dynamic so wind plays a major role when you are designing for sprinklers and when you are having a large throw sprinklers definitely wind plays a major role so you have to definitely look for these parameters when you are designing for a large sprinklers i mean sprinklers with large radius the kasapal then what else nobody is talking about temperature evaporation rate of evaporation so you have the open pan evaporometer okay so you have bellani spirometer what all you have dry bell wet bell readings mostly useful for your poly houses so all these you will be putting to use when you go to the field you may think that this is of no use in the first year i don't need to read meteorology because i am an irrigation engineer i will be planning for high tech things but these are the basics which everybody needs to know like you i have also read this in the first year of my college 1985 so thanks to my professor i am able to remove that so you also should be thankful for all those teachers who are imparting that knowledge to you okay next please you get the assessment of your climate then you need to know the the type of medium soil one good advantage of uh, landscaping is you can change the entire soil see in agriculture you find one area which is red soil area one is black soil area one is calcareous one it is like problem soils like in uh, the navalor puttaput area so there are areas which are specific with uh, soil types in agriculture it is practically impossible to change the entire soil type to suit your crop but in landscape we can do it if we are not doing it at least for the pits that we take for the plants we can change it so that is the option that you have and you can choose a soil so in irrigation what is the very important thing to look into irrigation is the drainage part so drainage comes as the top priority in your planning for any irrigation project if you fail in drainage then you fail everything so we should not think about that i am an irrigation engineer i did not look into the drainage part definitely you need to look at it so for drainage also soil is important you can alter the structure and texture of the soil or increase the porosity the water holding capacity all this can be done so this will come useful when you try to take it up to the rooftop gardens normally in conventional gardens like you are not bothered about the weight of soil in the ground because it is already in the ground but when you go to the rooftop you need to look at the load bearing uh, design of the structure that is constructed and suppose if a tree has to be placed i need to fill in about uh, uh, 1 meter height of soil now what would be the weight of 1 cft of soil any idea 1 cubic feet is 30 by 30 by 30 cm a light weight media by 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter can be about 135 to 150 kg that is a light weight media if it is to be the conventional soil it will weigh at least 8 to 9 times more imagine when you are irrigating it the entire water soil strata will be saturated once saturated all the white spaces will be filled with water and you know what is the weight of water that is going to occupy 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter that is going to add to the 
get load of the building. So that will be a problem when you are planning for the rooftop gardens. So that is when you need to look at the soil, the soil type and the soil type that needs to be changed for the crops. Then I was talking about the slope, this is for the larger landscapes. For small areas you can make the area flat and provide a slope in the direction of your need. Say for instance you go to a home garden, they will insist that the flow should be along the which direction? Your vastu will be forcing you. Please provide a direction of slope that it rains in the northeast. If that client is insisting on that, you may have to provide it. So you may have to raise the southwest corner and then have the slope along the northeast. And in a form that it is not leaching away your soil out of your plot. So that is the skill in landscaping. Next please. Okay, then before you go to a irrigation design, there will be someone, a landscape architect who will be providing you the garden design. So basically like there are some other people who are working before you in a place uh, where you wanted to work. So they will be providing you with some basic structures like these are the structures and this is how we are going to place it. Now you have to provide an irrigation plan for this. So take that drawing, the drawing may not be in a square, rectangular, triangular fashion. It could be in a curvilinear position like this. Architects love curves. You can see the curve. And when you are asked to measure the area of the curve on the field, you will do it in an AutoCAD very easily or in software. But when you are asked to measure that on the field, then you will find it very difficult. When there are five or ten circles which are getting intermingled and the lines are cut, you need to identify the area and to get the soil requirement or for cutting and filling. There are so many things which you may have to work out, which takes time. So for that you need to understand how they design it. Try to break them into several subsections so that it is easy for you to measure. If there is a possibility for a square, cut that square out because you know it is very easy to measure the square. Then you will be left with small portions which you can deal with it a much easier way. So this is a an exact field diagram with the type of crops that is given. This is given for an example only. Next please. So I was telling that you need to visualize. So this is the drawing that you will have in a normal AutoCAD. But you need to visualize this drawing. Like what is the type of plan? Then you have to bring it from the plan view to your perspective view in your mind. Because you will not be in a position to use your software or the client may not be providing you with this information. They may provide you with the names of plants. This is the first stage and you need to identify how the plant, I mean your first standard passport size photo and your present passport size photo are not the same, right? Your face is undergoing changes. Similarly, the plant also will undergo several changes from size, uh, shape, color, form, so many things that you need to find. And there are some plants which are uh, designed to be maintained in a way. Say for instance, if you are planning for a hedge, a hedge will be cut like your haircut. You cannot let it to become, if you let it, it will become a tree. But it is designed to be maintained as a hedge. Certain trees are designed in certain forms, to appear plants, like round or different shapes. So they are to be maintained. So you have to visualize it in that way and then start your plan. Next please. So this is a very simple exercise of uh, proceeding towards irrigation designing. Now I have an area, I have a house at the center and a, a very simple for simplicity because I am only taking sprinklers here, so I am taking lawn. So which is the best method for to irrigate a lawn? And can you irrigate a tree with a sprinkler or a drip with a sprinkler? Why do you say that? It is common sense, yeah, should not be asking such questions because you know that grass requires more frequent irrigation in less quantities spread over large areas. So what is the best method is like you mimic rainfall. In increase the frequency, reduce the volume and use the water judiciously. So that is the concept for sprinklers. For drip, 
you have to saturate the soil first. So that is the basic concept. Again, what I am trying to do here is there is one large area. We are trying to segregate this into zones. <coughs> Any problem, big problem, you split it out into five problems, deal with one problem at a time, then you can easily solve it. So the same concept is applicable here also. So we have A, B, C, everything is long grass. Next please. Now, how do I place the sprinkler? The thing is, I am working backwards. Now, I need to see that I need to provide water. Now, how do I provide water for the lawn? So, that is what is given here. We start off with sprinklers. Use the minimum number of sprinklers that is necessary to cover the area. Now, how do you start with? In a square, place it on four corners and use an angle. You know that in uh, sprinklers you can alter the angle. <coughs> Even if it is an impact sprinkler, you can fix the range. So similarly you can see that the ones placed in the corners and the ones placed in the centers, they have a 180 degree, the other ones are having 90 degrees. So this will be the arc radius for each of the sprinklers that we are trying to populate. Now, what is the major problem in a sprinkler? It is spraying more evenly. If there is a wind drift also, it can even go one side or the other side. But can it really irrigate the area which is close to the sprinkler itself? No. So, these are some of the blind spots. So, we need to place more sprinklers to cover that blind spot. So, you start off with the minimal number, look at the radius that you require, then first place it. Next place. Then you try to populate more and more sprinklers. So the first step is like we placed four in the corner and then we try to increase in the centers and then see further. Now can you see in the step two the second figure where you have the circles which are overlapping. So these overlapping circles are going to provide water to your blind spot. One, the opposite one will be providing water to the blind spot of this and this will be providing the water for the blind spot for the other. So this is the way by which you start using the sprinklers. Okay, so rather than telling how to use it, if I say how not to use it, it will be much more easier for you to understand. Let's go to the next one. Now this is the incorrect way of using sprinklers. Now you understand it much better. You can see the water application pattern and you can see the second one also and the third one also. So you will now know like how to place sprinklers. So this is very easy when you have a geometric space to work with. When you have so many curves, it will be definitely different. So let me give you an example of how you start off with an irrigation. Next please. So this is for the first picture of how you finally have overlapping sprinklers and close that project. I am not talking about the pipelines, I am not talking about the types of uh, rotors and the type of pop-up sprinklers or the nozzles, anything. Just to place or populate sprinklers and close your job. Next please. Now this is a case study. This was done in IIT Madras. Uh, I have done this for almost three or four uh, uh, stadiums there. This is one example of how you go about with placing the sprinklers. Now we have seen that we have placed it or populated it and we had the coverage done. Then you go back to the, the first one on top, it provides you the telescopic pipeline by which you convey the water from the source, from POC, how you take the water, convey to different source, what are all the control mechanisms that you have, can you operate it on the, in one go for all the sprinklers, do you have that much of water available, is your, can your pipeline provide that much of flow and can, is the pressure sufficient enough to load all the filters, are the, all the sprinklers at the same time, it may not be possible your horsepower of the pump has to be increased several times. So for to reduce the cost, you have to segregate again this into several regions. So you will be irrigating A region first, B region, C region and D region. 
you can see on top that there are some control valves there. Those control valves will be deciding like in which succession you will be operating these valves and providing the same amount of water for all the areas, but not at the same time. It follows a sequence. Now this is where you can think of automation and other improvements to irrigation designs. Next please. So this is a, a, a more clear uh, picture where you can see this is again one of the alumni has uh, sponsored this project. This Manohar C. Varsa has sponsored a 20 crore worth uh, stadium for IIT. He is one of the IIT alumni who has provided this and he wanted to have an education. So this is the design I had proposed for that. And you can see the control structures. So from the legend you see that there are some pipelines which are telescopically reducing from 90 mm. You can see from 90 mm to 40 mm we have. And what is the type of pipes that we use? And uh, you can also see the type of uh, rotors and nozzles that we are proposing. Of course, this is a rainbird uh, brand. For by brand, it will vary because everybody wants to be unique. They have some variations in terms of uh, their uh, flow, their uh, diameters of uh, the the wetting uh, perimeters, etc. So we have to go by that. You have to look at the charts on uh, at which pressure levels these uh, rotors will function effectively. So with this in mind, you start planning. Then you have a 75 mm controller plus solenoid. Now, why do we use a solenoid valve here? For automation, you need a valve, electronically operated valve. So that is a solenoid. So we have we have recommended an automatic. Of course, they did not use it, but we have suggested this 75 mm. And the next thing is a rain sensor. Now, why are we using a rain sensor? In automated uh, systems, if it rains. And if your uh, sprinkler system starts working, will it work? What will I think of you? So we have more sensors. So this is where automation comes into play. So you have a rain sensor when there is a detection. I mean, it also has a small rain gauge which receives, suppose if it receives water above a threshold. When do you call it as a rainy day? What is a rainy day? If you receive 3 mm of rainfall in your rain gauge, is it a rainy day? Do we record it as a rainy day? Why not? Your rate of evaporation will be much more than the rate of precipitation. So net benefit is zero in terms of precipitation. So you don't call it as a rainy day. Similarly, for all rain sensors, there are some threshold levels. You can calibrate them depending on the area. For instance, in Chennai area, the humidity levels are pretty high. In Trichy area, the humidity levels are pretty low. You can alter your rain sensor to have a threshold 3 mm, 4 mm, 5 mm, 4.5 mm depending on your location. Then use it as a day, as a rainy day or a non rainy day. Suppose if it crosses a threshold, then you won't irrigate. If it is not doing so, then it starts irrigating. So that is the function of rain sensor. Then you have irrigation control, shut off valve. Shut off valve is very important. Many places you have this. Surge walls, shutoff walls, or black hole wall, or NRV. Have you heard about these terms used frequently? This is very important because when, whenever there is a pull out of a sprinkler, then there, there would be a surge. That surge has to be cut. And there is always a possibility of backflow that can happen. That also should be restricted. That is why we have all these structures as a prevention material. So, this is one example. Next, please. So this is the pipeline network and you can see the control valves there. Next please. Now this is the final finished product of the stadium. Now did they go for this design, irrigation design in the very first instance? It is a engineering institution of repute and they teach their students the latest technologies but have they adopted those technologies? It is still a question. Because I had provided them three options in three different times. First, initially I had provided them with rain guns. Rain guns with your uh, QC pipes. You move from one place to other, use the rain gun and then irrigate. Then shift it to the other places like the farmers do. This was the low cost option. Then they found it very cumbersome. Now, people engaging labor and getting it done and not having even irrigation is even more a problem. 
Then they said place one single pipeline. You can see that one on the one this spot here. Can you find this? Now this is a pipeline with a plug-in type of valve. So you have to just place your rain gun. There is one here and one on the other side. Just place one rain gun here and engage it. It will run for a few minutes. Then once you find that the area is saturated, remove it and place it on the next uh, location and irrigate it. Do this for one uh, one side and go back to the next side. So this is the way you minimize cost and do it. Now finally they felt that technology will definitely have a bearing on cost. And by following the technology in the long run, that cost would be minimized. So initial cost was like they used the QC pipes and rain guns. Second is they used rain guns with a fixed pipeline. Now they went on for the sprinklers but without automation. So there will be a manual valve that needs to be opened and closed. So this is the present stage. And they said that after few years, when we are modernizing, we will take up the solenoid valve. The same thing you will practice, you will see this happening when you go with the technology to the farmer or for a, a landscapist. The first thing that they come, comes to the mind is the cost. So you need to see that how far you convince the client with the technology and how successful is your technology in catering to the client's need. But you go to a golf course or a stadium irrigation, they don't mind or bother about the cost. They say that every time I switch on, it should work. Or I need not even switch it on. It should work on a timer basis. I will not do any caring. I also need to do my fertigation. Whatever I need to do for the lawn, I should do it from within the irrigation system alone. So that is the requirement. Next please. Okay, now we go to the types of sprinklers and valves. I think our time is running away. Or can I take time? Okay. So you find sprinklers and rotors. So what is the difference between a rotor and a pop-up sprinkler? Can you learn about this or uh, is it? okay? Okay, pop-up with your pressure it comes up and then follows an irrigation practice. Now rotors have gears. They are driven by gears and these gears are being lubricated by water. In other places, you conventional machineries, you use lubricants, oils, but here the lubricant is water itself. So this is a more effective way of operating a standard flow. When you want to traverse from one direction to the other, you want to have it evenly in compared to the pop-ups the gear driven motors or rotors are very efficient that is why we are using them here and you also find that in one you have a direct pipeline and sitting on it the saddle so you have the rotor directly sitting on the saddle and there is one more rotor here sitting on a swing assembly now why is that so in a swing what happens is suppose if i want to raise my soil I want to raise the soil further. Now, will I be having one more pipe here to raise it further? Or suppose I want to lower it. Say somebody has developed a lawn, better. Maybe they did not compact it properly. In two years time, it will settle down. Once it will settle down, the, the sprinklers will be popping out naturally. And then you can't be using your lawn movers or any other machineries on top of it. Because it will be something which is popping out always. So that time to reduce that assembly, you use the swing assembly. In swing you can reduce it or increase it. So that is the purpose of this swing here. Next please. So you can see the swing assembly here where you can reduce it. What you will be doing is instead of having the uh, nozzle here, if you reduce it, it becomes somewhere here. So you can increase it by, if you see my hand and this as a swing, you can alter it like here or here. So this is how you can use the swing assembly and initially like uh, along the when you have a rotor assembly on top of that it will look black am i right because that is the place for that rotor or sprinkler now we have some things like the salt cups the salt cups are something like which can have some soil which will also have grass 
grass and there is also a tricking mechanism by which that grass also will be irrigated. So when you place it on the field, you will not find that you will have a sprinkler there or not. Only when, when it pops up, you will know that there is a sprinkler. Otherwise, like it appears to be a flat touch. Next please. Okay, so sprinklers we know can be used only for a circle. Now can I use the same sprinkler for a square? But there are options. Already you have many things. You go to Amazon and see there are so many nozzles like this available. You can try it. So you see the sprinkler pattern. You can see there are different series of sprinklers. And for, to suit your requirement, you have to choose the, or identify the right type of sprinklers. So you can see the pattern here in the 15 strip series. You have something which goes along in a rectangular fashion or in a square fashion. To cater that uh, square pattern, they have conveniently modified the sprinklers in such a manner that you will have a square wetting pattern. So you need to identify the type of uh, sprinkler that is necessary to cater to your requirement. Next please. Okay, this was, I think the image is missing there. Maybe hidden away. Okay, this, I was talking to you about the gear driven. So I don't think so, I need to say anything more on that. This is a gear driven one, lubricated by water. So this is sufficient for you. Next please. Okay, can you go to the one back? One more? Yeah. Next. We are talking about the 19 to 35. You can see that the radius, and you also see something as in the inner circle. The, those inner circles are the dark patches, which normally are blind spots, which normally occur in nozzles. But we have some special pop-ups which have a different throw because normally there is one throw and there is one more impact which will break your throw, so that the area of uh, wetting will be increased. But here the nozzle itself like unfolds like this, where there will be one throw which is of a longer distance and a shorter throw here. Therefore, you will be able to wet a larger area. So that is the advantage of certain pop-up nozzles. Of course, the picture is not here. Next, please. Okay. Let us stop with the sprinklers now. Let us forget lawn. Let us forget uh, golf courses, everything. Now, where do you use drips? Pro plants, where you wanted to have extremely low water um, delivery of water, you will be using. What is the technology that you know in drip that exists right now? You take a normal hose, put a hole, and use it. We call it as a soaker hose. It has been used, put to use in many places. In, before the drip irrigation came in, they call it as a soaker hose. You wanted to just wet the soil first. For that, they use that. Now you have the HTP pipes coming, different sizes, 12 mm, 16 mm, in different, uh, you have even larger pipes to convey for longer distances, HTP pipes. Now, what is the technology that you find in emitters? Pressure compensating emitters. So as you travel along the hose, you get an even flow for all the emitters. Apart from that, what is that technology that is possible? Long cloth orifice. Long, uh, I mean, uh, this is something like which was there in the earlier period when they were even using it for as a bivalve type for subsurface irrigations, we were using them. But now you broadly classify them into two categories, one is inline, online. online. So you know the other meaning in is inside or on is outside. So that is a very simple thing. But for garden, aesthetics is very important. Now should we go for uh, online or inline? It is a very big question. That depends on the plants, not the aesthetics. Definitely, like you should not be driven by aesthetics there to design an inline. You never know whether the holes are cloth and whether the water is being conveyed to that plant or not. 
until it dies. And once died, even if you restore the block, you will not be able to restore the plant. So that is a clear cut indication where you need to understand which technology will work for you in that situation. So we have technology options inline, outline. In outline, when you have so many monkeys and when you are having micro sprinklers, every monkey will be sitting under one micro sprinkler for some time and pull it out. It will happen. If you want to happen, try it. It is happening. So this type of emitters, this is a standard practice which they follow in landscapes. In landscapes, you are not supposed to let the emitter fall on the ground. Now when you let the emitter fall on the ground immediately, like uh, when the rain occurs, when there is an interculture operation, then soil particle will be clogging your pores and definitely they will not accept this because the plants that they plant in is much more expensive than the plants that we do for agriculture operations. So that is why we need to, we are spending more on landscape irrigation also. So this is a standard thing where you keep a drip hose, take a micro tube, 4 mm or 6 mm micro tube and then have one emitter there and put that emitter on a stick. So these things are what we will feel as an extra expenditure. But this is how or this is the procedure by which those plants ought to be irrigated. Next please. Okay, this is the difference between these two hoses. Have you seen these hoses which are in copper color or no? No, it is very simple because the earlier answer was not understandable. So the difference is nothing. Color is black, the color is copper. They made it with a purpose because you can see on that inside you have a small copper plate. Now why do you have that copper plate? Now that is the technology innovation in drip lines. What is the purpose of having a copper plate? You don't have a copper plate, you have an inline um, drip line. The root is hydrotropic and geotropic. Means it goes below the ground, it goes in search of water. So if the water is coming from a pore, and if it is not operating on a regular basis, it will traverse towards the pore. Eventually, once, once it enters the pore, it is going to block the pore. So finally, when the pores are blocked, then the purpose of your deployments are lost. So the purpose of having copper is, copper is a material which will not allow plant growth. That is why many people take uh, water in copper vessels. It doesn't allow much of your biological growth. Have you seen people taking water in copper? Yes. But if you keep that water for a long period, you will have a green color, grubby based formation in copper. That is poisonous also. So the purpose of having copper is to not let the root penetrate and clog. So that is a new innovation. It can be used where the plant is acceptable with the offer. So these are these minor innovations which comes in the way when it comes to drip lines and the sprinklers. Next please. Okay. Now how do you irrigate a tree? How have you been irrigating trees? Base. Base. Basin. Okay. Where is, where is the absorbing root for it? Now everybody can say I eat food. But which part of my body eats food? Smoke. So similarly, all trees require water. Which is the area the plants will absorb, the tree will absorb water the most? Roots. Of course roots. There are other places also but in a minor quantity. Of course roots. But roots at the base where you are irrigating or farther away? What do you call that? The drip circle or canopy? Yeah, canopy is like in your 12 mode and the shade falls, that shade line is your drip circle otherwise. That is the area where the absorbing roots are the maximum. So you should be technically be irrigating only there. Are we irrigating? So when you are irrigating something in a place where it is not necessary, can we call it as irrigation? So that is the whole essence. And second thing is, you see in urban areas, Many people plant trees and they also provide drip irrigation lines. But 
in the slightest of a gale winds or a cyclone the trees fall away am i right why hydrotropic and geotropic when you are providing water on the surface and when the soil is compacted where will the water be so the root will go deeper so a well grown tree needs no water because it can go in search of water we have been divining water with the help of trees there is one book also published in saraswati mahal library where ground water divining was done through the identification of trees in certain areas because the depth of the roots will decide the depth of water availability so the depth to ground water table will be known by the nature of the tree from its root line so similarly when you are going to provide water on the surface you can't expect the root to go deep second thing is compaction is the killer now that is why we always should insist that even in tamil like you say agala uruva devada aadama uruva devame why penetration of roots will be easy roots will have aeration roots can absorb nutrients at the deeper level and they also can be a cycling of soil so all these happens so that one couplet provides a very good solution for the problems that we are facing in the cities in tree planting we don't take sufficient depth of soil to plant a tree ultimately what happens is you have a shallow tree irrigate it even further shallow and the roof coils around on the top and with the slightest gale of winds the load at the top is much more than the anchoring that is being given by the roots and therefore it topples if you see wherever you go and observe that an uprooted tree anywhere just look for the root zone it will not be more than 1 to 1.5 meters in diameter which means that the active live roots are only there and we are trying to irrigate the tree in that region only so that is why we need to spread further away now the concept is for a smaller tree how you start doing it is provide the water at the root zone itself you you also know that roots require oxygen roots require water now when you are saturating with uh, water oxygen will be divided in the long run so saturating the soil also is bad and once the compaction is done what is the scope for aeration no aeration that also is like partially slow poisoning the tree we do this both in the name of irrigation or fertigation whatever it is in the name of doing good we are doing more bad so this is a concept which is already available these are expensive options i told you these are expensive options this is a low cost option on the sites can you see the low cost options on the sites there are two trees right can you see that picture or maybe you can even stand a bit and see there are two pipes there maybe think the two black pipes on the first picture and this is like a 1 inch pvc pipe with some slots and a geotextile bag folded on top of it and then planted along with the tree so we take a 1 meter pit use the two pipes and plant along with that and we use a dripper line you can see one dripper line there and if you want to see this is this site is in trichy only there is one person uh, is having a vijay dairy the person the owner is uh, having a company called vijay dairy and vijay cement also he had he had a crazy idea of developing a tree park so he wanted to have all trees which are not native to trichy and wanted to have a collection so we brought him about 110 species of trees which he has planted in our it is somewhere near pungano area i will get you that address also you can see but this is a old picture by this time the tree could have grown and you might have seen that vegetarian the area, this white one goa trees etc those trees are also there i was not one there for a long time so we have mimicked this so this is the best way to irrigate trees i also had a similar problem in uh, apollo hospital chennai so the hospital client said that we have a lot of this happening in the hospital and they called some kerala namudri to find a solution 
and he came and he told that the root of a tree is touching the sanctum sanctorium of the god there. And they wanted to have a solution. It may appear funny, but it is an opportunity for you. <coughs> yeah, there is a business opportunity for you. And then they found somebody and somebody gave my name and I was called. So I was asked to provide a root barrier. Normally it happens, roots can uh, traverse anywhere. It can go, especially when it is a epiphytic tree like your uh, people tree. Your uh, Arasama. So people trees are more epiphytic. So you can go along. You can see the Angkor Wat and other places where the trees have engulfed the structure itself. So that is possible. So similarly, I had an opportunity to work there. So we constructed a four, a four inch concrete wall to segregate. Add a protein, waterproof protein, and we also filled in with sand and provided this deep water irrigation to train the roots to go below. Now this is an opportunity for anybody who is who will get that. So once you know that this is the principle by which you will be operating, you have to innovate it yourself. So these things come in the way when you provide when you start providing some good services. You will definitely be called for specialized ones. Next, please. Okay, we have hanging pots. Have you seen hanging pots? How do you irrigate them? Spray. You spray the leaves, soil, foliage. Is it sufficient spraying the foliage alone? Then, if you want to pour. You pour wax, what happens? It drips. There is the heat. If it has a drip flow, it will drip. So, the easiest form of learning irrigation is through container gardens by the having pots at your own home or rooms. How many of you have pots in your room? Pots in your room? Anybody is having plants in your room? Plants? Yes, no. Yes. What type of plant? Where do you have it? Near to your money press? Where do you have it? Near the window. What is the media? What is the base? Water. So you know that plants come up in water also. So one basic thing is it's easy to start growing your plants so that you understand how a plant grows. Similarly, you can also attempt with plants. Okay, don't take the plant, the parts which are there in your campus and place it inside. You can try it at home and it is also good for several other reasons. You will understand by how you can innovate irrigation there also. Here we have a micro, again micro sprinklers are used. In many places they will be having these hanging pots. Now this is having a flat base or a mass base. In a mass base if you provide more water it will start trickling down. That should not happen. So you have to have a controlled flow thereby you have a microtube with a sprinkler to irrigate so that it washes the leaf as well as, as uh, provide minimal irrigation. So you have to have a shut on and shut off valve somewhere outside so that you can manipulate this. Next please. Now the other option is to have self watering containers. Now is this technology known to you? Now what do you do when you have pots at home and you want to travel out? Now when you are having pets at home, you definitely will have to take it with you or give it to someone else to take care of it. Similarly, when you have pot plants, what do you normally do? You pour all the 5 liters of water today, come back after a month and see that uh, the plant is uh, taking it on a daily basis. <laughs> it won't happen. So how are you going to schedule the irrigation? How are you going to let the plant take the water in the quantity that is required for itself? Now that is where we have these two things. One is by surface tension, the other one is gravity flow. Both you manage the level of flow. In surface tension how you manage is to manage with the number of weeks that you provide for a plant. Suppose you have more weeks, more amount of water would be conducted. And similarly, you want to have the R5 size control in a gravity. These are the small things which you can try. Take a Pepsi bottle or a big bottle, put a small pole and 
and put it inside. Now we have these emitters, these plastic emitters are available. You can make it in Amazon or any other shops. You adjust the total size and then see like what is the discharge rate. Like you operate your turret, you can operate it so that it requires or provides you. Now this is becoming a reality. Again you will have opportunities for this. Next please. Now this is the opportunity, that is the principle, this is the opportunity. Now this is a client here who has asked for a pot. They have tiled the entire area, they don't want water to flow. Now what happens is when you pour water in a pot, what happens? The drained water will come out, it will bring all your soil, red soil area. The red soil is a very good colorant. Once it colors, it's hard to remove it. So this is a problem. So the client said, I don't want red soil, I don't want water to come out, I want to have pots, I want to have plants on the pergola. Why they wanted is, they had this metal tubes, huge metal tubes on the wall and which was an eyesore for them, they want to cover it. So they wanted to have a pot which covers it. So the shape you see at the back, so that is how the pot should be shaped at the back, the one at the below and that is the front and it should be a self watering planter. Now can you get this available? Now I need something which is of 1.5 meters high, um, 60 centimeters wide, 90 centimeter long. Can you get something like that? You have to fabricate it. Now engineers are made to construct and build things. So that is an opportunity for you. We made a template in wood. Then we work on the fiber, this is FRP, fiber reinforced plastic. Then the base contains, the base will have a reservoir of water, we had drain cells on top of it, used lightweight media, I told you the soil weight will be very high, used a lightweight media and you see that grey type, there is a, on the corner there is one small hole there, where we had a pipe where we will be irrigating the plant and there is also probe which is a simple probe. We put the float inside to see that to what height the water is available inside. Now what happens when it rains? Now this is say open to sky area. If it rains, I am having a self water watering container, what will happen? If I don't have a drain hole, it will be filled in. So what we do is above the reservoir we have a hole and we open it up only during rain period. Whenever we see that the float is going above the threshold, we open it up. So this is an opportunity for everybody to customize your own containers. This is a possibility. Next please. And you can see that hole here at the bottom. Now this again is a steel pipe. Can you see the green ones there? What is inside is a steel pipe. And uh, the problem that we had, this is a field problem which I am telling you. That green lattice is about 8 feet by 4 feet. It is a standard material which is available. Now, if I fold that 8 feet and I want to make those both ends touch to complete that shape round, then I don't have sufficient space to provide a drain pipe inside. Because there is a steel pipe which is a load bearing structure for a sky over bridge. There is a bridge on top of it and there is a steel pipe which is the foundation for it. But from the roof, from the bridge I need to drain. So if you can see in that, inside that there are some concentric rings. Can you see this? Similarly there are rings everywhere that will support the lattice. And inside that we fabricated one more drain with a GI sheet. So that GI sheet is just 1.5 inches and it's about 6 inches wide. So 6 inches wide, 1.5 inches. We have designed one curvilinear drain pipe and use the same lattice to cover it. So you have an opportunity where you can fabricate a self-watering planter. You can construct or provide a galvanized iron drain pipe and you can also conceal it and have it is for the plant growth. So all these three opportunities are coming to you in one go. So these are the options which you need to explore and the angles are, the stainless steel angles are provided here because there will be plants, there will be corrosion, there will be water.
So definitely you need to have a choice of plants. Again, that was a steel pipe that was also coated with waterproofing materials. Next. Next. Okay, now comes to automation. Uh, let us uh, run quickly. Automation, this is something which is very simple. You have electromechanical devices. You had mechanical devices earlier, like a timer. You open a timer, you give a screw and let that to unwind. Once it is unwound, it can close back. So a valve was designed in such a way that you screw it to open it and let the uh, coil work backwards and once that one once it is the timer is uh, closed then it will close the valve it's a very simple mechanical electromechanical uh, valve which was designed now we have digital valves you have timers you can put on some four batteries this can be connected to a tap so you can see that faucet attachment is there you can connect it to a tap and you can have your drip lines for the home or any other place then fix your time so for irrigation what you need the quantity that has to be delivered in what time and in what frequency these three you can manage here once you manage it and you set the timing it works so this is simply to fit it on to a permanent point of connection POC where you will get continuous flows and to manage the flow you are using this as a device because in your absence it can provide irrigation in the place where you want to irrigate Next please. Now we have sensors. I told you about the rain sensors. Similarly, if you go to the temperate countries, you will have one more form of precipitation. Snow. snow, not even temperate countries. Even you go up north, you have that. So you have snow and snow melt. Now when you are having snow, is it white? Why is to irrigate? Sometimes it is done to increase the heat. We will talk about that in a different class. In uh, apple orchards in Himachal, they are still using irrigation to avoid the chilling. So there are several ways by which you can use you the science that you have learned for the benefit of mankind in place where it is necessary. Similarly, you have wired and wireless. In wireless form is the one which is being used in telemetry for dark systems also. Next please. And this is something, are you, yes. do you have a project, have you used this yes, for your projects? Yes, Similar things you can use at different depths. Now this is going to be for the shallower depth, you know the martial level. Now a lot of incubators are using this and they are coming up with mobile apps which can provide some augmented override controls to irrigation because they have an automatic system but they also wanted to be doubly sure that the soil moisture is adequate or not so if it works on a normal basis without the sensor it works on a timing basis and then if they find that the moisture levels are adequate they can have a manual or a web based or a mobile based override to switch off or to switch on so these options are available there are a lot of incubators which are coming up with lot of innovative solutions which are low cost for farmers. Next please. Okay. So this is uh, one of the projects that we have been working on. Uh, you are doing something on a small scale, like uh, say one acre, one hectare, like that. Imagine that you want to irrigate some one lakh hectares, two lakh hectares. Now how do you automate it? Is it possible? And if it is going to happen, what is the scope of irrigation in years? Is it low or more? Mm. Now this is something which is put to practice. Now you can see that again they have this monkey problem. You can see that fencing to protect the telemetry sensors, which will be projecting the data. And you have controllers at each and every point. So for instance, there is a 1,25,000 hectare command. It is being divided into 1 hectare plots. And each plot is provided with a pipeline with two bar pressure. You have the liberty to use your own existing micro irrigation system. Just remove it and hook it onto your pressurized system. And the water that is provided to you is filtered. So you don't need to have your own filtration systems. 
Now this is going to be the future of irrigation in India. Now this has been implemented in Narayanpur in Karnataka and now one project has been cleared in Haryana Lohara system and similarly the next one is happening in uh, Vani Vila Sagar, there is one more in uh, Maharashtra. So these are happening in huge quantities. Now for this to operate, you need a huge control room, like you, what you see in your uh, space centers where they provide rockets. You have similar control rooms because there will be a problem which is coming that in one place, there is a pressure drop, there is a pipe damage, then you may have to attend. So first is you need to identify the location, provide the information to the person, the person will have to inspect the space correctly. Because the control panel can only show where the trouble is and what the trouble is. To attend the trouble you need a person. Again that has to be done. So if you see the control room, I don't have that picture. It is a huge one with lots of uh, monitors and there are uh, automated signals to provide. Because when you are thinking about 1,25,000 outlets, imagine the location to find it. So like uh, for about 1,000 controllers you have one Screen. And that will give a pop up with a sound alert. Only when you have a sound alert, you will go and look into that system itself and see where the problem is. So, this is going to be the future because all the modernization is happening without increasing the quantum of water, but by increasing the command area further and by increasing the cropping and irrigation intensities. Where is the water available for it? It is a major problem. And the other major thing that we are focusing right now from the Asia Bank and Development Bank perspective is to look at the alarming drop in groundwater. Now groundwater for instance that Lohara system which I was talking to you about in Haryana, Rajasthan border, it's again a sandy system. There is a drop of 2 meters in groundwater in the last year. Now you see whether it is alarming or not. Now the Central Water Commission wants the priority to recharge the groundwater rather than to irrigate because the rate of abstraction is much more than the rate of recuperation. So that is a huge problem which we will be facing it shortly. See, they are leading it and we will be following. We are in a hot rock panel, so which means like the, the problem that we are facing is much more intense than them. So that is the scale the, uh, by which the role of irrigation engineers would be required for the future also. Next please. Okay, this is for the rooftop. We will rush through. I was talking, to, telling to you about uh, the, the concept of load bearing structures and what is the, uh, the amount of uh, load that you can build on it. Now you have this concrete structure and ask for the client if it is waterproof properly. If not, you have to do your own waterproofing with your own sheets. You can use HTP sheets from 500 microns to 1 mm to 2 mm. It is commercially available now. You can thermal build it, test it and then start using it. On top of that you have drain cells. On top of that you have the growing medium. The medium could be a lightweight thing, a combination. On top of that you can have plants. So this is how you design it and you see the materials on top of that. The geotextile is the filter fabric. The drain cells too enhance the Drainage. Next please. Now this is how the thermal welding is done, a cheap piece welding where in the center portion you can check for leaks. Next please. Now you can see the drain cells here and if you can see the top center sheet, all the holes are not having a center white portion. Can you see that? The reason is the drain cell primary function is to provide drainage. Now the option is the ones which are black. They are serving as cups. So instead of drain cell, they also behave as drain cup. This drain cup can retain water. So whatever water you irrigate or when there is a precipitation, 50% of that will be retained in that cup, which provides as a reservoir. So these are some of the innovations. See, somebody is designing a drain cell and somebody is, is, uh, uh, is improving it or improvising it by providing a drain cup. So this is how innovation starts. So when you face a problem, and when there is an opportunity, you try to improve upon it. Next please. So this is how it is being laid, put to use. Next. Then on top of that, you will be putting the sheet. Okay. So this is in nutshell about uh, the uh, roof garden type. 
you can see a roof garden in uh, Adapa Hotel here, one of the closest ones. And there are many other places also. You can see the Google images also on the key buildings. You will be able to find the green roofs there. Now coming to green walls or vertical garden. This is another area where the cost of establishment is very high. Say like 1500 to 2000 per square foot. Say for instance, you want to use this 4x4 area which is 16 and if it is 2000, what is the cost? 16 square feet, 2000 rupees. What is the cost? <coughs> Any anybody require a calculator or <laughs> 16 into 2000? Any answers? 32,000. Do you think 32,000 for this area is expensive or not? When you do an expensive work, what would be your margin? Let the margin be constant. Say, let us let us keep it as ten percent. You do a job for two thousand and you earn ten percent. What is it? You do a job for twenty thousand and earn the same ten percent. What is it? Which is better? So you should focus on things which are much more lucrative. But you will not get opportunities every time. But you have to make good of the opportunity that comes your way. So this again is an experiment which we did, this again is an out, outdoor hall. Again the examples are from IIT. Uh, you can see that is a playing wall. This is the new, newly refurbished in out gate. Maybe if you go to Chennai you can see this. This is on the inside of it. The newly refurbished in out gate. This is in between. The wall has been provided in between. Now we have provided a stainless steel 2 by 2 fencing. Yeah, with a weld mesh. Uh, 304 grade uh, SS, we have provided a fence and we have provided the drip lines. You can see the drip lines with the emitters, can you see, and hook pots. Now, next please. Now, this is the finished product. Do you think 2000 per square feet is worth or not? So, this is where you have to show that by investing, you show them the value of investment. When you invest so much and you show an empty debt plan, then it won't work. So this is how you do a good job where the value of uh, your time investment is much more. And the returns also is compensated with that and start working. Next please. This is on this side. I told you it is in the middle. This is the outside, out gate side. The next one can be on the in gate side. So you can see that on the cross, on top, those plan selection is not good because you are able to see the pots. So that is one example that you need to learn and what is preventing those plants not to survive there and place a different set of plants. So this is a learning also, which a, every part of your implementation is also a learning. Next please. Now this is for a indoor area. The one which we saw was an outdoor area. Now this is for an indoor area. They wanted to cover or they hide the staircase. Can you see the staircase? This is an old building also. They wanted to cover that with green wall on both sides. Now it is easy to have straight lines because the structure that is available in the market will fit in straight lines. But to have curves it is difficult. Next please. Now you can see this is the finished product. Now is it worth the amount that we are spending on it or not? So that is the question. Once you are able to prove that the person is able to get the same level of satisfaction by spending so much, then go ahead with this. Next please. So this is the close up of that. So the you see that normal conventional available materials are like what you see on your left, the green ones and the black ones. These are the standard things. So they have a set of three where you are supposed to have your uh, drip line on the top. So for every three pots, you will have one line which is passing through and from one pot to pot, there will be a trickle effect. After saturating the first, we will go to the second and third. The key thing that we need to remember in any vertical garden project is like the rate of water application. The emitter should have, what is the normal discharge from an emitter that you find in a normal tree crop or a plant crop? 4 LPH. Now it should be here at 2 LPH. Now you go to a person, the distributor and ask for a 2 LPH emitter, you won't get it. So you have to foresee, order, it is available and you can get it. 
So that is the key. See, once you wanted to plan something and do something, this a normal person cannot do. It. A normal contractor will not choose two LPS. But a normal contractor can copy a design by looking or observing how it is being laid in a different place and copy the same thing in a similar location and close the job. It will work fine also. But they will not know the intricacies of this. So this is where the qualified person should stand out from the rest of the crowd. So the last one, growing medium, growing medium always lightweight. See so what we normally do is we use the the ones at the base, at the base, and use it as an outer cup. And we use a four inch inner pot where the media plants are being kept. Suppose if there is going to be a failure of one plant, we remove the pot alone, not the container outside container. So replacement is very easy, especially when you are working in great heights. You can imagine that uh, for 75 meters height in Ambani's house, you have the vertical garden. And there is something which is coming up in Delhi which is having 150 meters. Now imagine working at 150 meters, you want to change 100 plants. Is it easy? So it is better to plan and choose the right plant and the right irrigation rather than to experiment by going up and down and changing plants. So that is the technology available which has to be refined. The last one you see is a fabric material. So this was the one which was used in that curved area. So you can bring it to any shape. It is a felt, a geotextile material, felt. So water can go by capillary rays as well as you can make it by gravity. So we did both here because if you let the water rise, the salt will be deposited on top. If you let it down also, there is possibility. So we used both. We kept it anchored it to the ground and we started irrigating only one line. And the advantage is we had two rows, one in the front and one in the back. The back is completely different, it is covered, no light. So we were forced to put a row like that. I don't have that picture, if I have I will share it. Next please. Okay, what is the potential for smart irrigation? So we call everything as automation, whatever we do. We call this as a smart city. What is a smart city? You do smart things, basically. So you wanted to improve your water use efficiency, you wanted to improve your training levels, you wanted to improve your uh, energy consumption. So these are the things you wanted to reduce pollution, you want to keep the longevity of human life, all these are the key parameters for smart cities. The same thing you need to consider for your irrigation also. What you need to do, whatever force or material that you use has to have a long life, it has to function properly, it has to use the minimum amount of water. It has to serve the purpose for which it has been designed for. So these are the key indicators that you need to work on smart irrigation. Automation is one of the key forces. And this is what is the market. I don't want to put, what is 1 million? 10 lakhs. So what is the amount of lakhs, dollars converted to rupee? That is the potential. Now this is only a forecast. Let us not be bogged down by those numbers. Of course, if that is the potential, do we have an opportunity or scope for irrigation engineers once you pass out of this college? Yes. Now that is the confidence that you need to know and for that confidence you need to get the knowledge and the technology that is available. Next please. Okay, I, I will go into the other aspects. We, we were only touching about the irrigation and what are all the other opportunities that a person can get when you are attempting for one assignment. Now this is one good example of tertiary aeration of treated water. Now you know that in urban areas, if the number of dwellings in per unit is much more than uh, the prescribed norms, you are supposed to have your own STP or your sewage treatment plants. And the norm is to use only treated sewage for irrigation. Now, if you want to work in urban areas, say if you want to work in a Gulf country, can you drink the water that you are irrigating? Technically yes, but aesthetically no. Aesthetically no to the sense because that water has been treated. So which is a grey water recycled. So the only option that is available in most countries for urban landscapes are treated groundwater. So similar thing is we need to work with treated groundwater. Now this is a hospital in Chennai. 
and they have a lot of water which is being put to primary use. The blue water is put to use and what you get is a grey water which can be used as a green water also. So for that we are using it and this is a design which I had proposed for aeration. Now how do you air it and have it in the same container without much losses? Options. The problem is given, I need to aerate it. Now how do you aerate, what, what have you seen in aerators? We have a lot in the fish, fish ponds, have you seen the aeration done? How it is done? Yeah. It's a yes. paddle, paddle aerators, have you seen them? Yes. Sprayers, so these are several ways. But you want something aesthetic. Now can you have that paddle aerator put inside a hospital courtyard and make it appealing? It won't be. So this was a design given. It was approved. Next please. Now can you get some uh, nozzles like this? These nozzles are also not available. Now what is the scope for you? You know how a nozzle is designed? Then you fabricate your own nozzle. So we did our own fabrication with stainless steel. This is a dandelion, half dandelion nozzle. I mean not a dandelion, this is a belt, belt type. It's a belt type of the nozzle that we have done. And no automation here because we are only going for the treated water aeration. Next please. Now you can see it before it was calibrated. We were trying to see that how far the bell can go. It should be within the uh, specification that the container was having it. Next please. Now you can see the ones which is finished. Can you see that vortex coming from that pipe? That is the original color of the treated switch. Now that is the vortex is also going to separate the particulate matter material from the water. And you all know about vortex? How it is formed? Coriolis effect? Yeah? That's it. The same thing it is happening here. Now you can find what's happening in the bell nozzles. The color will be slightly different because it is coming from a pressurized flow, but you will not find any smell. It is a treated water and if you can have a bad odor in the entrance, will it be a welcome sight for the patients? No. So this is what we have done. You can see the welcome sign also there to show that it is an entrance. Next please. This is an opportunity. Again, one more opportunity for a cascade here. Now this is in a lecture uh, house, uh, lecture hall complex again in IIT here. They wanted, they have a lot of wildlife. Wildlife needs water. Now how do you water them? There has to be shallow ponds or shallow pools. In a pond water, the chance of water getting contaminating is much more compared to a flowing water. Now how to ensure flow? You have to have a cycle. So for that we designed this cascade, you can see the physical construction, we had some uh, foam jet uh, fountains you can see at the back and water is flowing as a, a cascade and beneath we had provided a koi pond. So the process is like if there are any particulate or uh, organic material which would be fed by the uh, fish and the water will be recycled. So this is how it has been done, next please. So this is the finished form of a cascade. So there are opportunities like this which is available for an irrigation in India. Maybe if you have any chance to go to the butterfly park in Pichi, have you anybody, have you gone there? Have you gone there? Have you seen one straight fountain there? Why is that fountain? I told you about that also a while ago. Why was that fountain put there? You are between two rivers. Yeah? Avery and Polydom. In summer between two deserts. Sandy bed of Polydom, sandy bed of Avery. Now how will the temperature be in summer? More dry heat. So I told you that the purpose is like you need to have a humidifier. So how can you humidify a large area? By increasing the height of flow. Then wind will take its direction. If it goes in the left, the left area will be if it goes on the right, similarly, that is why it is a sandy bed, again in that park area which is about 25 hectares, it also is a sandy bed, we need to, I mean 2 feet of soil, it is complete sand, 
So can you construct a pond there? So how can a pond exist there? One is the costlier option of constructing a concrete structure. The other option is you already know. Like me. You can start with your cell polling sheet or HTP or various grades. There again HTP lining was done. So these are all options for irrigation engineers. So rotary nozzles. Many new innovations have gone in, but only when irrigation engineers visit that place, we will be able to appreciate it. So similarly, there are opportunities which are available everywhere. You have to make good use of it. Next please, with this I will close. Okay, somebody was asking about aeroponics, right? Again, we, uh, I mentored a project, this is in Chennai. You might have heard about plants growing in tall towers. Yeah, it is partly hydroponics and partly aeroponics. Now that uh, we wanted to develop a prototype. There was some initial testing. See, this is a drain pipe. Can you see the corrugated black one? Have you seen this put to work in cities for drain lines? These are the low cost pipes available for drains. Subsurface drains, these are the low cost pipes that you put. The orange one is also the subsurface uh, drain pipe. The black one is also diaberries. So we fabricate in such a manner to hold the plant. The inner portion will be a hollow tube where you will be providing a mist of water or a fog, whatever you may call it. And that is going to provide both the nutrients as well as water for the plants to survive. And the plants will be kept in a teacup and placed inside the hose. So this is the procedure. You can see that how the plants are placed. This, these were the experimented initial experiments done. Next please. And then we came out with a prototype and we also um, did a, a printing. This is a 3D printing of the structure that has been designed. We went for an octagonal plate which can be divided into two square, two parts, so that you can put one on top of the other because you need to multiply this. For multiplying, you need to develop a tie. To develop a tie, it is pretty expensive. So we need to have something which can work on one die. So that is how we divided this and we made it. Can you see the material being assembled? And these assembled materials, next please. You can process it. next. Okay, this is the design that how many plants that you wanted to play, uh, place. So this was some design experiments done. Next please. And can you see the effect of this? Can you identify the plants? plants? The center one is the palak, the deli palak that you will find. The one on this side and that side, they are the curly kale. So there are a lot of leafy vegetables which you will find in exotic restaurants. These can be grown at the homestead also. This is a homestead model which I was uh, showing. It was done for a testing purpose. Next please. So this is how you can put your drip, sprinkler, your hydroponics, aeroponics, uh, whatever you may think of in irrigation for urban landscapes and specialized landscapes. So this is how you can put them to proper use. And to sum up, I should say that it can be put to practice when you have a solid understanding on the basics. When you are stuck somewhere, go back to the basics. You will find the solution there, nowhere else. Innovations are always necessary. You have a lot of products which are lining up in the market. So each and every year there will be new launches. You will always see advertisements with new, improved, yeah, whatever you catchy words. Everything will have a small change. But you should keep abreast with the changes that is happening and try to use which is the best one for you. So automation and efficiency is going to be the key for the future. Smart irrigation has got a huge potential. Try to automate where possible. There are some very expensive modes which you may not try. But once you try for automation, definitely you will have come into the DC wiring part of it. And you, the entire irrigation engineering portion other than your pumpings will be led by DC. For the others, you will be using the AC current. Here, you will be using the DC lines. So, you may have to work on both the 
uh, alternates that is available in the uh, electricity domain also and other than uh, irrigation you should be also be focusing on lighting part suppose you are going to develop a, a light a fountain fountain can be improvised into a musical fountain and the musical fountain can be improvised with lights and sound effects so all these are within the purview now that everything is available in one go at least when you buy and install a ready made available things you need to know how to repair or restore it whenever there is a troubleshooting required so that is where the knowledge of the engineering is going to help you so i think with this i will close and if there are any questions that you have on the related uh, subjects i will be glad to take thank you Uh, in Madras, uh, you have uh, placed the uh, stadium. You have placed the rainfall sensors, right? No. I told you automation was not done. Yeah, it is only manual. Yeah, if we are placing the rainfall sensors, where will we place it? In the uh, field or other than the computer? Because uh, the sensors, uh, how? Uh, I mean, like how the sensor differentiate the sensor? There are two types of sensors. One is wired and wireless. Okay, for wired sensors, you will have to place it in a place where it can receive rainfall directly. Yeah, without any obstructions, please. Yeah, when you don't have any obstructions, the water, uh, the rain precipitation should directly fall on the sensor. So that is a wired sensor where you take it. In wireless sensor also, the same principle, but it has to be connected through a telemetry. The data that is collected from the rain sensor to be Kept on the telemetry side. Normally, what it can what it can be done is like we have normally have pump houses. It is placed on top of a pump house where it is vandal proof. Normally, what happens again that campus is also rich in monkeys and uh, vandalism also is rampant. So you have to place this in a place where there are no vandalism and open to direct sun or rain. So that is the option, and you will not have anything like your uh, uh, the dripping bucket type or different types. Earlier types we had those electromechanical devices where water will be collected in a container, and once that container is full, it will drip on again and see for the next batch, like we had in the automated uh, rain gauge stations. Here you have only sensors based on the water that is falling on it and for the time for which it falls. They compute the quantum of water in mm and you can calculate the sensor by telling that above 4.5 is a rainy day or about 5 mm is a rainy day or 3 mm is a rainy day once you calibrate that it can go but there are other places in other places what they do say for instance in himachal there are weather stations also they have problems with hailstones so hailstone is a different problem and uh, rainfall is a different problem so rainfall will not cause material damage for the trees, especially apple trees. But when there is hailstones, when it falls on the fruit, the fruit quality is lost. So they have to put anti-hail nets. So hail sensors and rainfall se rain sensors are slightly different. They can be placed on top of a building or on a spike or on a pole, connected through a wire or a wireless device. Mostly the people prefer wire because it is easy to manage than a wireless device and connect it to the controller. I showed you that rainboard controller where we, you can connect it to the rain sensor or you can you will use IOTs. You can use a different rain sensor or the information which is available. There are SkyMat and other private weather stations which are providing weather data. Now this weather data is being put to use by a lot of agencies, not only by those who are working on hydrometeorology. People called insurance agencies, they also use the hydrometric data to see that whether we can commercialize this farmer based on the loss because of rainfall or no rainfall. So that is again a use. Similarly, these climate data are available online. This online data can be captured for that particular area through an IoT device which is programmed by a person and you can use it as a rain sensor. These are the innovations that are possible. This is what the incubation people are doing. You don't have to depend on the rain sensor as the sole source of information to decide on whether to irrigate or not irrigate. The options are open. 
Main sensor wired, wireless, or you can use IoT or any other data. It, see, the whole idea is when you start irrigating deeper and the trickled water grows deeper, definitely the final growth also will grow deeper. Definitely there will be root growth on the surface, on the sides, but the uh, absorbing roots will go deeper. That is the whole idea. And one more thing is, in a way, for a single tree this will work. Now how it is working for you when you are irrigating on the base of the stem for this crop and how it is working for you in the conventional setup is, this base will be the drip circle for the other tree. So other tree will be using this tree's water and this tree will be providing water to the other trees. You see in a grown up situation, all the roots will be intertangled. You might have heard about the red sequoia trees in the <coughs> US. The ones, the tallest trees of the world, have you heard about that? Read about the tallest trees in the world? And how they are connected in the roots? You might have seen the movie. What is that movie? Avatar. Where you have the connections made by synapses. Like what happens in the brain, they do a synapse. A similar synapse happens in the redwood trees also, where tree roots are interconnected. So in a tree park, for instance, if there are more number of trees, definitely like the true canopy also will be touching, the root canopy, the root growths also will be touching each other. So water for one plant will be irrigating the other plant. But the whole idea is not letting the root to shallow and bunch up on the top. That is why we wanted to take it vertically. Thank you for your patience. And if we can apply anything uh, from today's lecture, I think it will be a great benefit for all of us. Thank you. Dr. Farmer Dean Maslamu and uh, Chief Guest and uh, Professors and uh, Assistant Professors of uh, Department and uh, College. Um, my dear students, so my <coughs> job is to provide, uh, that is, uh, to deliver the vote of thanks. So, uh, first of all, I thank uh, uh, Vice Chancellor, President and Vice Chancellor for uh, um, giving permission to convey such a relevant lecture. And uh, next, I like to thank our uh, uh, Dean PG for uh, providing financial support to conduct such a relevant uh, lecture. And um, our Dean is having a, is a give constant encouragement to um, conduct such a lecture. So thank you, Richard, sir. Uh, next, uh, I like to thank our uh, Father Dean uh, uh, Maslamani to choose the right person for uh, providing this uh, wonderful lecture. Then, uh, <laughs> then, uh, then I, uh, I like to thank uh, uh, our uh, chief guest, uh, Dr. Mashankar. So he gave a very interesting lecture for uh, more than two of us. So he explained uh, the uh, landscape irrigation very nicely. So I think uh, uh, you have uh, undergone some IDP training for uh, two, two weeks back. So it's about uh, uh, the uh, micro, uh, micro education. So this is the extension of uh, the company. So it's a very good uh, uh, example uh, for application of micro education. So the uh, chief just explained the subject very nicely with the very good uh, uh, examples and uh, uh, case studies. So that is very, very useful to us. And, uh, and uh, students also, I hope the students also enjoy the uh, lecture uh, very, very, nice, uh, very nice way. And then um, I'd like to thank our um, uh, department staff uh, for arranging this lecture, and uh, especially at uh, Nagarajan to be the all uh, logistic arrangement and uh, for the Collective of uh, this uh, lecture, and uh, apparently I'd like to thank uh, all the uh, students, previous students, for uh, attending this uh, interesting lecture. I think I hope we have learned uh, 
uh, many things about uh, the natural radiation and, uh, and its application, um, especially the, land, uh, the landscape irrigation. And we are exposed to the recent advancement like uh, um, um, automated irrigation also. Thank you very much for the opportunity given. Thank you. Great. So we'll meet again. Sure. <laughs>